Hey, what's up, YouTubers? Tio here with Simplistic Fishing. Hey, today I'm going to do a lake breakdown on a lake that I've actually only been to once. And when we went out there, the waves were so big, we actually had to turn around and come back home. And that's Lake Grapevine. For their smallmouth up there, excited to go up there and fish. So what I've done is I broke it down. We've got the Google Earth waypoints to share with you. And then next video, we're going to break it down into Navionics. And then we're going to go fish the thing. So, hey, stick around. Got some good information for you. Also have those waypoints to share for you if you want them. Let's get started. All right, well, let's jump into this. So <clears throat> really Grapevine Lake, you know, I was interested when I dove into uh, to Google Earth because the fluctuation of the water here is crazy. Um, you'll be able to see it, you know, it, it's nuts. Um, it actually went from like a drought in 2014 and then they were totally flooded in 2015. So finding that spot on Google Earth was a little bit tricky, but I did find um, that if we look at the year in 2014, that seems to be uh, the best the best timeline to uh, to go find. So let me put up the historical thing here and let's get started. And we're going to start back on 2014 and we're going to start on uh, really the wet northwestern side of the lake. So up here where the creek channel is, I don't know. Honestly, if you could even get a boat back here, but it looked like you could um, when I when I actually pulled up the image and looked at the lake at full pool. It didn't look like it was going to be a problem to get back in here. Obviously, you'd have to troll back in here, but there's some really good creek channels. So let's start up here on this side and you can see here we've got a very significant uh, creek channel that comes down through here. So I've got all of those marked all the way out to the entrance. So if we look at that, maybe when the when the lake's at normal pool, you know, it's really hidden in there and this could be a really good spot. Um, nice flat, nice shallow area, got good creek channels, got another creek channel that's over here as well uh, that I marked for you. And then there's actually some debris and some concrete that's right underneath here. Um, looks like where a road passes. I don't think you can get a boat through there. It looks like it comes up pretty shallow, um, but you might be able to get around there depending on the water level and things like that. Um, might be a really good area to fish. Let's look at this back at 2014. I'll show you what I was seeing here. So here's the debris and the concrete, and it looks like there's a lot of brush and stuff that's built up around there. Maybe like a beaver dam or something like that. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, definitely an, an old road bed that goes there that would be a good place to fish especially uh you know during certain times of the season so those are the two creek channels that i found up on the northwest side now kind of going down the lake this was an interesting lake because you had rocks in some areas and then other areas where it was just like a normal texas lake you know where you just have the muddy bottom so i tried to point out uh unique rock features that i saw obviously any boat ramps channel bins um structure you know logs things like that so we'll go through them but here we've got a really good creek channel that comes down and when you look at the lake when it's more at full pool um you know you can't even really tell but you can tell once you get back in here where the creek channel is but you can't tell up in here so you got some pretty good spots right here with some decent depth um and really on top of that you've got the creek channel that goes back behind this dock so if we zoom in here one thing that really caught my eye was this log this log is just out here in the middle of nowhere all by itself but normally it looks like it would be underwater um, just off the edge so you could probably fish around that and probably pick up a couple keepers there i'm moving back to 2014 you've also got a really nice deep pocket right here um, from that creek channel and if you look at it it bends straight around here and comes right underneath this dock so this dock could be probably a money spot to go fish around it's just got a lot of good stuff around it plus it's got some rock over here with an old boat ramp or something going on um, and then you got a good channel swing right here as well as right here. So um, just a lot of good stuff in that area. I'd probably definitely go back up there and try to fish it. So coming along this bank line, didn't see too many things that really caught my eye. I did see this, uh, which is some underwater logs that are just right off the, the edge that's different than everything else. So that could be a unique place to, to take a look at. Also have some scattered rock that's kind of along here. And you can see these seem to be just in little piles so you've got one pile here and one pile here and again if we look at that when the lake is up that's totally underwater so that could be a good place to look because it's, it's unique um, and it's different than everything around it um, and it's, you know they look like just little mini mini rock piles so moving on down the bank line here let's go over to this point this point looked interesting um, it looked like it had some scattered you know bigger rock on it maybe up towards the towards the bank line um, might be worth checking out also had some scattered rock down here right off the break so it looks like it has a pretty decent break that's coming off of here so i definitely fish this point around this point and see what you could find there i've also got a nice little flat up in here but i didn't really see anything up in here that 
you know, really caught my attention. I guess I could have marked this creek channel, but just wasn't significant enough for me to, uh, to worry about. So I skipped all this area, got down in here and found some more scattered rocks right off this point. So again, looks like a good point to fish. Plus you've got some, uh, some lay down timber there as well that you could fish. They'll probably be attracted to that as well, especially being right around that point. And then coming down here, this point here looked really good. So you notice how it's, you know, it got a few scattered rocks, got a pretty good rock pile right there. But man, this just really stands out. I mean, basically from right here, this transition area right here to about, you know, right in here, you can tell the landscape just changes. So this is probably a pretty good hot spot. And it looks like a deeper spot too, like it really drops off there. Then over here in this little cove, you got a really significant ditch that stands out. And again, if we're looking at this, you know, when we're just out there fishing, say today, this is what it's going to look like uh, today compared to, well, maybe this thing comes back. This is what it would look like today if we were to pull up there. So we would, we may notice that, you know, there's some rocks here. We'd have no idea this ditch was right here though. Um, so we've got some really good stuff in here to, uh, to take a look at. Also moving on down the bank line, some really beautiful homes up here. Man, I wish I had that kind of money. Moving on down, moving on down. We're going to move on down. Got a nice rocky point there, but these were all very similar. So because they were so similar, I really didn't, didn't mark them. One area that I probably would fish, though, would be right here. You notice how you've got some really rocky area right in here. And then it pretty much just fizzles out here and it fizzles out here. And you always hear them talk about transition areas. This is a tiny little transition area, but basically you got a transition area right here and right here. So I would just fish that just that segment of that point. It's probably be pretty good off each side of it. All right, then moving on down, you've got a buried rock pile down here, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty significant bank line. Looks like it's pretty steep. And then right at the bottom of that bank is a nice little pile of rocks. Um, so that could be a really good place to look. You can't really tell, you know, off the bank line, you wouldn't notice it, um, but it's definitely there and it's pretty significant. So definitely fish that. And that kind of runs along this bank line here, but that was the most significant pile that I could pick up um, on Google Earth. And then obviously it's a point, so I'm gonna have to fish the point. It's got the same type thing, you know, where you got the rocky ledge right here, and then you've got another drop right here. Um, so definitely a, a place that I would want to check out. Didn't see much back up in this cove. Did see a pretty good, significant drop right here, though. If you look at this, they've built this uh, seawall here that looks pretty significant. And right at the bottom of the seawall, you've got a nice big group of rocks right here um, that are different than all the other rocks around them. So that could be a, a hot spot to fish. Definitely this point being that it comes out um, pretty shallow right in there, and you've got some scattered rocks. That could be a good spot to look at. Um, I said that's a point, but it's more like a, a little bay or a little cutout. Let's look at that thing a little bit when the lake's up a little bit more and see what it looks like yeah so you can't really tell but there's a big rock pile right there um, so that could be good also got some good cover and stuff to flip in this lake too Never, like i said i've only been here once that we went out got out from the boat ramp and the waves were so big they were coming over the the bow of the boat and it was cold that day so we just decided to come back home We've also got another large rock point. You got these little mini points here, but a really large rock pile here. And notice again, these rocks are different, right? They're different than those rocks over there. These are a lot smaller and things like that. There's some scattered ones here, but this is a really good pile of larger rocks. So I would definitely focus on that area for sure. Bank line looks pretty good though. Got lots of rocks, lots of scattered rocks, things like that. And again, if you look at the end of this point, it's again, it, you know, right here to right here. It's like they, it's like, all the rocks clumped into one spot so i would definitely fish on the collection of rocks that are on the end of that point this area back in here in the marina looked interesting there's some creek channels way back in here but there just wasn't anything there as far as cover or structure or anything like that that i could see where you know where they would want to collect up now i'm not saying there's not going to be fish back in there i'm sure there are there's fish everywhere but um, probably just not somewhere where I would, I would go back into i might go up there in the spring um, but just wasn't enough in there to really make me want to you know, idle all the way back in there. Um, had some good rocks off this point though, right here. Also had a nice little drop off here um, and you got rocks along this bank line. So um, that, you know, this, this could potentially be a good spot um, for sure, especially with all of the nothings over here. And then you finally get some rocks that are up here. Got an old boat ramp that's way back there. I didn't even mark it because there just wasn't anything back here that, that caught my eye. There, there is that creek channel, but again, if you look back here, it's just it's just a lot of blah. There might be, an, that underwater log might be worth taking a look at if you're fishing back in there, but that'd be about it. So 
really just kind of skipped over that whole area and you know maybe fished the marina and things like that but as far as shoreline stuff there wasn't anything on the shoreline that really caught my attention so i'm going to move on out We've got another group of uh, large rocks that are right off of this point that looked really good we've also got a boat ramp that's tucked back in here with a little creek channel so that could be a potential spot you've also got some good rocks that are right off of this point so notice how the landscapes kind of change and then this gets really really rocky this ledge right here does this could be a, a good spot and that looks like a good drop off too let's take a look at that thing a little, yeah you would have no idea that that's there there's a 2017 it looks like the lake was down a little bit but there's a significant drop there that is a good point to, to fish. I haven't fished there before, but I'm telling you, you're going to catch a fish off that point. That's going to be a good one. Boat ramp there. A little more rocks over here off of this point. Nothing significant, but probably worth checking out. And I really like this because it almost looks like it's forming its own wall, like an underwater wall. And that's always a good area for bass, great ambush points, things like that. Again, we look at this thing when the lake is up and you wouldn't even know. Actually, it's flooded there. Uh, you wouldn't know that that was there. 17, this is a little bit more reality, but you've got that rock wall that's out here. So definitely take a look at that. You've also got some other areas in here. Um, look at all these points that just seem like they're out in the middle of the water and they're really not even that far out. You've got some larger rock right here, a collection of larger rocks off the inside of this point. You've got a good transition area uh, where these rocks kind of go and then they stop, don't have anything, and then they start again. So I mark both those transition areas. This point looks fabulous. Look at all those nice, big, large rocks uh, there. And again, that transition area is right here. Sometimes those transition areas are key. So you might not find them here, but they'll be like right on the edges of those transition areas. So just fish, almost make a line, like a virtual line and fish those transition areas and see if that transition continues under the water. If it does, sometimes those can be hot spots. Little shallow point here with some rock, didn't really mark it. Um, and then we got a nice clump of rocks that's right here on the edge here as well. Uh, so I'd definitely take a look at that. Then we're going to move on down. We got some rocks at the end of this point. Seems to be a common thing. This must be a good spot. Anytime you see Google Earth and there's a boat fishing the point, <clears throat> you know you've probably found the right spot there. You got a nice boat ramp here as well that you could fish. And then a rocky point that's back here by this marina. There's not a lot in this flat back here, uh, cover and stuff like that, just some grass and things but some real significant rock right off of this point. So we definitely take a look at that point, see if you can catch any fish off of there. And then moving on over, we've got an underwater log over here that is in this creek channel. And I've marked this creek channel all the way up so you can see it. Um, and pretty much just, I would fish around that creek channel, fish that flat, and then check out that log too. That could be good. Again, it's a seasonal thing, right? If you're in the back of the coves, depends on what time of time, but what type of season or time of the season it is for when you need to be back there or when you need to be on the main lake. So we went over these rocky ledges. Let's move over here to this rocky point. Got another nice rocky point here. And then moving on here, this is a pretty interesting little area. So you've got a, got a nice little creek channel coming in got two transition areas right right there and right there and you got some scattered small rock that are right in the middle of it so you can tell the landscape just changes right there for some reason um, that transition is very is very weak i don't even know if i'd really call it a full transition area but you can tell that it definitely changed it's something different about that area you've also got a small rock pile here that's hidden <clears throat> so take a look at that you've got another one here that's hidden and then another one. So you've basically got like four rock piles you can fish right around this bank line. And this one looks like a pretty significant ledge. So this, if I was looking at all three of these, I would say your your better one's probably going to be this one. But I could be wrong. They might they might just be moving on down, you know, stopping at each one. So take a look at each one. Uh, those should probably be pretty good areas. You've also got a nice little underwater rocky point here um, that looks really good that comes out. Good little ambush point. And then I think we're gonna move on down. We're almost getting down to the dam here. Got a nice little uh, overflow area here. Um, so you got, I marked the transition areas for you so you can see those. And then there's a ditch down here that was pretty significant or some debris as well, but you got this ditch that's hidden in these trees. So kind of everything looks normal, but then if you look here, there's this really deep spot right here. So take a look at that, especially depending on the water level. That could be a good spot for them to just be hanging out in. And you got some cover right, right beside it as well. You've also got some underwater debris here. that looks like an old boat ramp or something. I'm not even sure what it is. Old boat dock or something like that. But uh, take a look at that. Obviously, the riprap on the dam, that's going to be Smalley Central. So 
you know, you want to fish that, you can see on this Google Earth maps, there's a lot of boats already on the dam. And then getting back down in here in the marina, there were some good spots in this marina. Uh, it was interesting how they set up these marinas. But if you get way back in here, there's actually a pipe or something that's back in here on this flat. So just marked it said caution, but that could also be a fish attractor. The creek line actually hugs this bank line underneath the, uh, the highway there. And then there's a nice rocky point right here on the back side. And this would all be wind protected, so I uh, wish we would have came back here and fished it that day. We got an underwater rocky point that's back here as well. And there's some scattered timber, which I didn't see too much of that on this lake, but there's some scattered timber right along this bank line. You can see there's some laydowns and things like that, so that might be worth taking a look at. Then if we move up, obviously we got the uh, the boat ramp there. Um, some underwater rock right here off of this point, so not a lot here, then all of a sudden you see some rock. That's always a good, good spot to look. You got some flooded tires that are over here off this point, pretty significant. They're not too far out there, but hey, it's something, and that's really all you need is just something that's different. Um, and then we've got some isolated rock areas too. So you've got one that's right here that's just totally isolated. And then you've got a transition area here where the rock point kind of comes out. Um, and then you've also got some brush right in the middle of it. So you got rock, brush, rock, brush, and then rock again. So uh, I would say this area right in here uh, would probably be a pretty good area to target. We've also got an old boat ramp over here. Another rocky transition area right in here off of that point. Uh, got good rocks right along in here. And then the transition area would be right there and right around in here, I believe. It's hard to tell sometimes, but look at this. This point looks good. Nice, good, big drop off. Nice, big rocks. Kind of comes from these littler rocks to all of a sudden just being really solid rocks. So I would definitely take a look at that. Coming back in here, there is an isolated rock pile that's pretty shallow. And then I don't know if there was too much. Yeah, there was one behind this. So there is a boat ramp back here. You can fish in a boat ramp here. And there's a very significant creek channel that comes back here. Look at this thing. Looks pretty good. So I went ahead and marked that. Marked where the split was and all the way back. Taking a look at that in, uh, you know, say, normal water level. Looks like it could be a pretty good area to fish. So I would take a look at that for sure. I've got another boat ramp that's out here off the end of this tip. Let's go back to 2014. We've got an island with some good cover, and we'll probably cover the uh, the islands on the Navionics uh, part two of this. We've also got a boat ramp here, and then this little cove back in here, it had a lot of interesting stuff. Had a boat ramp, had some isolated rock piles, some small rock piles here. Let's zoom in here, it's a very small rock pile there. Uh, isolated rock patch right in there, another isolated rock patch there. Just a lot of these little isolated rocky areas. And these docks were just out in the middle of nowhere. And, and from what I've understood on the Navionic side, uh, someone has marked right in here that says there's some pretty good fish right in here. And they've also marked this area in here. So uh, those rocks must produce fish in these docks, obviously, as well. Uh, the boat ramp here, these docks weren't marked on Navionics, but hey, there's not very many docks in this lake, so it might be worth fishing. We've got some underwater structure here. You can see it's like an old roadbed or something that's under there. Uh, probably a roadbed. Kind of looks like a roadbed. It's hard to tell. And then you've got a very significant creek channel that comes all the way back in here that you can fish as well, as long as you can get your bass boat back in there. So all good stuff, man. This lake looks like a lot of fun. Definitely doesn't have as many waypoints as uh, Cedar Creek did, but not nearly as big of a lake either. So moving on up, we talked about that boat ramp. We've got some isolated rock piles up here as well. Got a nice big chunk rocks right in here that are just kind of out on their own. Got a good boat ramp. Got a good ditch here as well that's got some rock in as well so i just marked it it's almost a straight line but you can see the ditch is very significant um you know it stands out like a sore thumb then we're going to move on up we're almost to the end of this lake uh get up here we've got another rocky ledge coming right off this point another rocky point right in there uh not much back in here by all this this looks really shallow and nasty got a boat ramp back in here and then got another significant creek channel um, that I marked as well. And again, when we look at when we look when the water's up, it looks like we might be able to fish that area. Uh, so definitely go back in there, take a look at that. Could be good for you. And again, we'll do a video on grapevine. You'll actually get to see us fish these spots, and we'll be able to tell you, okay, these are good, and and cross these out. I've also got some isolated rock here, uh, isolated rock off that point. Got an old boat ramp you can barely see here. That could probably be a really good hot spot. This could even be a road. I can't tell if it's a, maybe it was an old road. These two connect together. Or maybe that's just an old boat ramp and they just look like they do, but check out both of those. There's also another boat ramp here that's hidden. And then there's a big rock pile right off the edge of this point. 
see how it's different than everything else. And again, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for things that are different. Um, and then let's go ahead and move on up. We got another underwater island here. Pretty significant creek channel coming back in here that looks pretty good. Looks like you'll be able to get to that too when the water's at a normal level. Uh, when I look at it in 2017, I don't see anything that would keep me from getting back in there. And then we're going to move on up, but I believe we're getting close to the top here. We've got one more spot. We'll talk about this creek channel over here we talked about earlier, and then we'll be done. Uh, I did find this little underwater point here that kind of sticks out. Anytime you see things like that, might just go back and scan it, you know, see if there's anything there. It wasn't along this bank line that I, I would see that would attract them there, but uh, you just never know. Sometimes the, the things that aren't very obvious are the things that hold the most fish. And then we get back up in here to the uh, creek channel that I talked about. There's the debris and concrete, some creek channel bins I marked for you, all kinds of good stuff. So, hey, uh, that really covers all of the waypoints for Lake Grapevine. Uh, if you do want these waypoints, just shoot me a private message at Simplistic Fishing. Give me your email address. I'll send these over to you so that uh, you can you can enjoy them and hopefully uh, send me some comments back. And let me know if they do any good for you. We'll move, uh, we'll move on. We'll go to part two of this video. That will be for Navionics, so stay tuned. That's coming soon. Hey, and make Make sure if you can hit that subscribe button below if you haven't we really appreciate the support and we really really love to have those subscribers uh keep increasing hey tight lines to you guys i wish you the best of luck catch some big ones this season take care